Life can sometimes feel like an insurmountable challenge, leaving us questioning our path forward. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by your circumstances? Wondering if things will ever change for the better? Do you long for a breakthrough, but struggle to see how it could possibly come? My friends, today we're going to explore the transformative power of speaking blessings over your situation. We'll discover how our words can shape our reality and align our hearts with God's promises. Today, I will show you how to harness the power of positive declarations and activate faith through your speech. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. Imagine you're tending a garden. Each word you speak is like a seed you plant. Negative words are like weeds, choking out hope and growth. But words of blessing, they're like vibrant, life-giving plants that flourish and bear fruit. Just as a gardener carefully chooses what to plant, we must be intentional about the words we sow into our lives. In Proverbs 18, verse 21, we find this profound truth. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. My dear friends, our words have the power to create or destroy, to build up or tear down. Let us learn how to harness that power for good, speaking life and blessings over every area of our lives. My friends, let us explore the first crucial aspect of speaking blessings over your situation, understanding the power of positive declarations. Words are not mere sounds. They are vessels of creative energy. When we speak, we're not just expressing thoughts, we're shaping our reality. This isn't some new age concept. It's a biblical principle that's as old as creation itself. Remember how God spoke creation into existence? In Genesis 1 verse 3, we read, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God didn't wish for light. He declared it into being. As beings created in His image and likeness, we too have been given the power to speak things into existence in our lives. Now, I'm not saying we can create galaxies with our words, but we can certainly influence our circumstances and mindset. When we make positive declarations, we're aligning our thoughts and expectations with God's promises. It's like tuning a radio to the right frequency. Suddenly, we're able to receive what God has been broadcasting all along. But here's the thing. Positive declarations aren't about denial or ignoring problems. They're about choosing to focus on God's truth rather than our temporary circumstances. When we declare God's promises over our lives, we're not pretending our problems don't exist. We're acknowledging a higher reality, God's reality. Think about the Apostle Paul. He faced imprisonment, beatings, and constant danger. Yet, in Philippians 4, verse 13, he boldly declared, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul wasn't denying his challenges. He was affirming God's power to overcome them. This, my friends, is the essence of speaking blessings over your situation. It's about choosing faith over fear, hope over despair. When we make positive declarations, we're training our minds to see beyond our current circumstances. We're reminding ourselves of who God is and who we are in Him. It's like putting on spiritual glasses that allow us to see the world through God's perspective. And let me tell you, that perspective changes everything. Suddenly, that mountain of debt becomes an opportunity for God to show His provision. 
That difficult relationship becomes a chance for God to teach us unconditional love. That health challenge becomes a platform for God to display His healing power. But here's the key. Consistency is crucial. Speaking blessings isn't a one-time event. It's a lifestyle. Just as you wouldn't expect a garden to flourish if you watered it once a month, you can't expect your life to transform with occasional positive words. Make it a daily practice to speak God's promises over your life. Start your day by declaring His goodness, His faithfulness, His love for you. When challenges arise, and they will, respond with declarations of faith. Remember the words of Jesus in Mark 11, verse 23. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Notice that Jesus emphasizes both saying and believing. It's not enough to just speak the words. We must believe them in our hearts. This is where many of us struggle. We may say the right things, but deep down, doubt still lingers. That's why it's essential to root our declarations in God's Word. When we speak Scripture, we're not just uttering our own thoughts. We're echoing God's eternal truth. And there's power in that, my friends. Real, transformative power. So I challenge you today. Start speaking blessings over your situation. Declare God's promises over your health, your finances, your relationships, your future. Speak life into those areas where you've been experiencing death or stagnation. And watch as God begins to align your reality with His truth. Remember, your words are seeds. Plant them wisely, water them with faith, and expect a harvest of blessings. Now, let's consider the story of the Roman centurion in Matthew 8. This man understood the power of words. When he approached Jesus for his servant's healing, he said in Matthew 8, verse 8, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. The centurion recognized that Jesus' words carried authority and power. He knew that a single word from Jesus could change everything. My friends, we serve the same Jesus. His words still carry the same power today. When we speak His words over our situations, we're invoking that same authority. We're partnering with heaven to bring about change on earth. But speaking blessings isn't just about getting what we want. It's about aligning our hearts with God's will. When we consistently speak God's truth, it begins to reshape our desires. We start wanting what God wants for us. Our prayers shift from God. Give me this to God. Let your will be done in my life. And that, my dear friends, is where true transformation begins. Speaking blessings also changes how we see others. When we're in the habit of speaking positively over our own lives, it becomes natural to do the same for those around us. Imagine the impact we could have if we consistently spoke words of life and encouragement to our families, friends, and even strangers. We could literally change atmospheres with our words. In Proverbs 16, verse 24, we read, Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Our words have the power to bring healing and joy to others. They can lift spirits, restore hope, and ignite faith. So, Let's not underestimate the power of our declarations. Every word we speak is like a brushstroke on the canvas of our lives. Let's paint a masterpiece with words of faith, hope, 
and love. My dear friends, now that we understand the power of our words, let's explore how to align our hearts with God's promises. This alignment is crucial because it's from the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Our words are merely an overflow of what's in our hearts. So if we want to speak blessings consistently, we need to cultivate a heart full of faith and gratitude. Let's start by acknowledging a fundamental truth. God's promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, we read, For all the promises of God in him are, yes, and in him amen, to the glory of God through us. This means that every promise God has made is available to us through Christ. But here's the catch. We need to believe these promises and make them our own. It's not enough to know God's promises intellectually. We must embrace them emotionally and spiritually. This process begins with immersing ourselves in God's Word. The Bible isn't just a book of rules. It's a love letter from God, filled with promises for every aspect of our lives. When we read Scripture, we're not just gaining information. We're feeding our spirits. We're planting seeds of faith that will grow into mighty declarations. Take time each day to meditate on God's promises. Let them sink deep into your heart. Personalize them. For example, when you read Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Don't just read it passively. Declare it over your life. God has good plans for me. He wants to give me a future filled with hope. As you do this consistently, you'll find these truths becoming part of your inner dialogue. They'll shape your thoughts, influence your decisions, and ultimately transform your words. Another key to aligning your heart with God's promises is cultivating an attitude of gratitude. Thankfulness is like a magnet for blessings. When we're grateful for what we have, we open ourselves up to receive more. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, Paul exhorts us, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Notice it says, In everything, not for everything. We're not called to be thankful for our problems, but we can be thankful in the midst of them. Why? Because we know that God is working all things together for our good. When we maintain an attitude of gratitude, even in difficult circumstances, we're declaring our trust in God's faithfulness. We're affirming His goodness, even when we can't see it. And that, my friends, is a powerful declaration indeed. It's easy to speak blessings when everything is going well. The real test comes when we face challenges. That's when we need to guard our hearts and minds most carefully. In Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7, we're given a powerful strategy. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When anxiety tries to take hold, we're instructed to pray with thanksgiving. This isn't just positive thinking. It's an act of faith. We're choosing to focus on God's faithfulness rather than our fears. As we do this, God's peace guards our hearts and minds. And from that place of peace, we can speak words of faith and blessing. Remember, aligning your heart with God's promises is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. 
Just as it takes time for a seed to grow into a tree, it takes time for God's promises to take root in our hearts. Be patient with yourself. If you find yourself speaking negatively, don't beat yourself up. Instead, gently correct your course. Replace those negative words with declarations of faith. Over time, you'll find it becoming more natural to speak blessings over your situation. Another powerful way to align your heart with God's promises is through praise and worship. When we praise God, we're not just singing songs. We're declaring His character and His promises. We're reminding ourselves of who He is and what He's capable of doing. In Psalms 22 verse 3, we're told that God inhabits the praises of His people. When we praise, we're creating an atmosphere for God's presence to manifest in our lives. And in His presence, our perspective shifts. Our problems seem smaller, and His promises loom larger. From this place of worship, speaking blessings becomes as natural as breathing. Finally, remember that aligning your heart with God's promises isn't a solo endeavor. We need the support and encouragement of other believers. Proverbs 27, verse 17 tells us, As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Surround yourself with people who will speak God's truth into your life. People who will remind you of His promises when you're tempted to doubt. People who will celebrate with you when those promises come to pass. As you align your heart with God's promises, you'll find your words naturally aligning as well. You'll speak blessings, not out of obligation, but out of a deep-seated faith in God's goodness. And that, my friends, is when true transformation begins. My dear friends, let's now turn our attention to the crucial aspect of speaking blessings over your situation, activating your faith through action. James 2 verse 26 reminds us, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. This powerful verse underscores a vital truth. Our faith must be accompanied by corresponding actions. It's not enough to merely speak blessings. We must also act in alignment with those declarations. When we combine our words of faith with obedient actions, we create a powerful synergy that can move mountains. Let's consider some powerful blessing declarations and how we can activate them through action. When we declare, I am blessed with divine health and strength. We must also take care of our bodies through proper nutrition and exercise. When we proclaim, God's favor surrounds me like a shield, we should step out boldly, expecting doors to open in our lives. As we declare, I am a channel of God's blessings to others we must actively seek opportunities to serve and encourage those around us. When we speak, my family walks in harmony and love. We need to intentionally cultivate patience and forgiveness in our relationships. As we affirm that God's wisdom guides every decision I make, we should consistently seek His counsel through prayer and studying His Word. These declarations are not mere wishful thinking. They are powerful statements of faith that should propel us into action. Consider the story of the four lepers in 2 Kings 7. Samaria was under siege, and these men were facing certain death. But instead of resigning themselves to their fate, they took action. They said in 2 Kings 7 verse 3, why are we sitting here until we die? These men didn't just speak about the possibility of survival. They acted on it. They stepped out in faith, and God multiplied their efforts. 
using them to bring deliverance to an entire city. This story illustrates a crucial principle. When we combine our declarations of faith with bold action, we position ourselves for God's intervention. Another key aspect of activating faith through action is persistence. In Luke 18, Jesus tells the parable of the persistent widow. This woman kept coming to an unjust judge, demanding justice. Eventually, the judge granted her request simply because of her persistence. Jesus uses this story to encourage us to pray and not lose heart. The same principle applies to our declarations and actions of faith. We must persist, even when we don't see immediate results. Keep declaring, my breakthrough is coming. Keep acting as though it's already here. Don't give up, even if the situation seems unchanged. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Your persistent faith, filled actions, are creating a spiritual momentum that will eventually break through into the natural realm. It's also important to understand that activating faith through action often requires stepping out of our comfort zones. God's blessings often lie just beyond the boundaries of what feels safe and familiar. When Peter wanted to walk on water, Jesus invited him to step out of the boat. Peter had to take that step of faith before he experienced the miracle. Similarly, we may need to take steps that feel risky or uncomfortable as we act on our declarations of faith. This might mean forgiving someone who has hurt us or making a career change that aligns with God's calling on our life. Whatever it is, remember that God honors faith-filled risk. As we step out in obedience to His leading, He steps in with His power. Another crucial aspect of activating faith through action is serving others. When we bless others, we open ourselves up to receive blessings. In Acts 20, verse 35, we're reminded, it is more blessed to give than to receive. As you speak blessings over your own situation, look for opportunities to be a blessing to others. This might mean praying for someone, offering words of encouragement, or meeting a practical need. As you do this, you're not just helping others. You're also creating an atmosphere of blessing in your own life. My friends, are you ready to not just speak blessings, but to live them out? Are you prepared to back up your declarations with bold, faith-filled actions? If so, you're on the brink of experiencing God's power in a whole new way. Let's declare this together. I am blessed to be a blessing. God's favor goes before me, making crooked places straight. His wisdom guides my every step. I walk in divine health and prosperity. My life is a testament to God's goodness. Let's go forth and act on these declarations, expecting to see God's promises manifest in our lives. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Sovereign Lord, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude and reverence acknowledging your unmatched power and grace. I praise you, Almighty God, for you are author of life and source of all blessings. I thank you for the gift of life and for pouring out your blessings upon me. Father, I pray for your strength and guidance to continually lift me up, helping me to speak life and blessings over every situation I face. I'm grateful for your word that guides me, your spirit that empowers me, and your love that sustains me. 
Thank you for the ability to declare your promises over my life. Merciful Father, I boldly come before your throne of grace, asking for your forgiveness for my sins and shortcomings. Father, I repent of the times that I've spoken words of doubt, fear, or negativity. Cleanse my heart and renew my spirit so that I may walk in your righteousness and grace. As you have forgiven me, I also forgive those who have come against me. Lord, help me to align my thoughts and words with your truth. I pray for the discipline to guard my tongue, to speak life and not death, to speak blessings and not curses. Help me to be mindful of the power of my words knowing that they can shape my reality. Grant me the wisdom to declare your promises over every situation in my life. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit of negativity and doubt that seeks to corrupt my speech. I bind the powers of darkness that attempt to fill my mind with fear and negativity. I declare that my mouth shall be a fountain of life, speaking forth your truth and your blessings. Lord, I claim victory over every challenging situation in my life. I declare that your favor surrounds me like a shield, opening doors that no man can shut. I declare that your wisdom guides every decision I make, leading me in paths of righteousness. In the name of Jesus, I declare that divine health flows through my body, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I affirm that your abundance overflows in my life, meeting every need according to your riches in glory. Father, I ask for your protection against every attack of the enemy. Shield me from spiritual warfare, physical harm, emotional distress, and mental turmoil. Guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus, preserving my peace in the midst of life storms. Jehovah Rapha, I ask for your healing touch to restore my body, mind, and spirit, bringing wholeness and peace to every part of my being. Lord, I lift up my loved ones before you, asking that these same blessings would flow into their lives. May they too experience the power of positive declarations and faith-filled actions. Bless them with health, protect them from harm, and guide them in your perfect will. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, praying for each other, believing for breakthroughs in every area of our lives. Father, we ask that you would empower us to speak blessings over our situations. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that our words may be seasoned with grace and aligned with your will. We declare victory over every challenge, healing for every sickness and disease, and protection from every attack. We thank you for the power of unity in prayer, and we claim your promises for our lives collectively. Grant us the courage to act on our declarations of faith, stepping out in obedience to your leading. May our lives be living testimonies of your goodness, power, and faithfulness. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you, in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member 
who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.